Hello, everyone. Mr. Chairman, Ralph, distinguished members of the governance of THDA and guests, what a big kick I get out of something such as this. It's so pleasant to come back and to see faces that I haven't seen in a long time and to be reminded of incidents and events that occurred that have faded from my somewhat uh, uh, feeble mind these days. But it's wonderful always to be in this building. And I thank you both for the invitation to come and join in. You know, I get excited when I come into this Capitol building. And on this particular occasion, my thoughts go back to the day on which Betty and I were inaugurated to serve our state. Governor Ellington invited Betty and me and the children to slip into his office and uh, to have a word with us. We gathered very excited and he said, now, young folks, and we were a little younger than he at that time, young folks, just a word of advice. Your four years are going to go by faster than you can ever imagine. My advice is, don't change when you come in, so you won't have to change when you go out. <laughs> that was one among many gems of advice we got from that fine man. But you know, in spite of his admonition, things do change a little bit. And sometimes you get a little heady looking back. But I recall vividly one day about a week or less than a week after I had left the governor's office. I was in an alley near the old Kane Sloan's building. And I was going over there to shop for something, and I didn't have one of those fine Tennessee Highway Patrol security men right on my tail. I was by myself. I stood there waiting on a big truck to move out of the way so I could walk across the alley. And while I was waiting, I, I glanced, and here were two young fellows standing there, and I couldn't help but notice that they were staring at me. Well, you know how things go through your brain, and I, sure, I thought to myself, well, these youngsters, they recognize me. One of them was so curious that he left his position on my right side and walked around back and came over here to this side. And by this time, I was sort of in consonance with them because I knew what was going through their heads. They recognized me. And just as I was about to say something to the one on the left, his face lit up. He said, you Beverly Briley, ain't you? <laughs> so you can see how quickly things could go from a high to a low. And over time, that's happened more than once. The humility has been one of my just desserts down through the years. But it was a great privilege to be here. And I made a transition out of a busy little dental office, seeing my last patient in May of 1970 and being prepared after November to assume the office of the governor of my adopted state. What a transition for me. And before I was sworn in, but in preparation for what lay ahead, maybe just a couple of days after my election, a small group of Governor Ellington's positive po policy planning team gathered down at Montgomery Bell State Park with my transition team to talk about some developments that were ongoing and pending in state government. 
and that we ought to know about. Well, among those briefs that we received, although I was not present, I was exhausted. I don't know where I was at the moment, but my team was where they should have been. Among those briefs was a school research project that was ongoing by a Vanderbilt Law student. He had picked up on something that apparently had been happening in the Council of State Governments over time, and he was wise enough to see the attractiveness of it, and so he was doing some research on the utility of establishing a housing finance agency for the state of Tennessee. This young man's name was Joe Torrance. Now he was a young buck, just out of four years in the Marine Corps and striving to be a lawyer at Vanderbilt. Well, in addition to all that, Joe joined Leonard Bradley's team on my staff for policy planning. And what a lucky stroke that was. <coughs> Joe's schoolwork became so interesting to the policy planning group with Leonard Bradley's incredible insight into what value really is that it wasn't long before the policy planning brief that Joe was working on was presented to me. And after some discussion here and there, it was in my desk, on my desk, and it had been presented as a proposed piece of legislation to both houses of the General Assembly, and they, in their wisdom, had seen fit to believe it would be good for Tennessee. And so I was privileged, once it reached my desk, to sign it. And who, of all people, did we choose to be the executive director of this embryonic concept for Tennessee, but Joe Torrance. <laughs> and Joe's schoolwork has become an historical fact. I'm amazed at what has happened and what I hear and what I read of what this wonderful agency has done. Joe started the, as the executive director, and the only paper in front of him was the bill that had just become law. He, he, he was, he was uh, starting from scratch, to say the least. Well, it was an interesting time for me because I was concerned about so many other things that this wonderful venture lay in the hands of Joe Torrance and Leonard Bradley for the most part. But I'm happy to say that Vanderbilt was supplying my staff with additional personnel. Uh, other students were joining the ranks. Now, for an Ole Miss graduate and a University of Tennessee graduate, I owe a great deal more to Vanderbilt than I have in the past acknowledged, but I acknowledge it here and now to say the least. What has happened just boggles my mind. More than 107,000 families have acquired the financing to move into their own homes. People who otherwise would never have been able to meet the financial requirements of home ownership were able to do so because of the THDA. We've issued bonds of more than $6 billion, now hold more than $2 billion in current bonds, with high ratings, AA, AA plus, all because of the record of responsibility that this agency has established over time. Well, I am incredibly proud of what you all have accomplished. And while all of you have achieved all these noble things, I pat myself on the back occasionally. 
just because I happen to be in the right place at the right time. And I'm more grateful than I can ever say that my chief policy planner, Leonard Bradley, has been such an integral part of that experience and so many additional experiences that I had during my short time. Leonard was an acute mind. He knew how to express himself, but he also knew how to listen. And our mutual friend who happened to be a law school graduate from Vanderbilt named Lee Smith was bringing in more members of the policy group and it was a very interesting time, and particularly for Leonard, who was a Tennessee graduate. We had to make some adjustments in our thinking. <laughs> well, this is, without a question, one of the most broadly valued experience that I had while I was governor. And I must say, it goes along with some other achievements we were very happy to accomplish. We accelerated the interstate highway development program, which had become somewhat lethargic back in the early 70s and needed a serious boot. We had to work awfully hard to create the Department of Economic and Community Development, which today has done grand things. The kindergarten program continues to please me, although I certainly wish we were getting better results from our public education system. And environmental and wilderness preservation endeavors stand out. All of those that I've mentioned are still ongoing, vibrant activities of our state government. And so I'm proud of that. To the executive directors who are here, all of you, Ralph, to members of the board, past chairman of the board, all I can say is that I congratulate you, and I'm awfully proud to be associated with you. Thank you.